Hey everybody and welcome to today's video where we're going to talk a bit about topology and how to control your geometry so you don't end up with a lot of extra edges going all across your model. Now one of the things that happens quite a lot and especially with uh, modelers who are just starting out is when they're adding in extra edges they end up having fly around edges going across their entire geometry and making it unnecessarily more complicated because every extra edge that you add in that's not uh, basically adding to your model it's taking away from the model so how do we control our topology? Well, I'm going to try to make this thing as simple as possible, and then we'll see how this thing works on an actual example. So for this, I'm just going to start off with a, a pretty simple plane. We control just one plane. Let's put it down to 50 by 50. And I'm going to make this thing uh, zeroed out to zero, zero, zero. Let's give it just a regular material and I'm going to make this thing black like this. All right. So uh, for the start of this, I'm actually going to give this thing a bit more, uh, a few more uh, segments. Let's see, maybe like how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five. All right. This works. So uh, how do we go from here? For Let's say example, we have uh, something like maybe these two are going outwards, something like this. Let's just hold on shift, put a few more of these and finish it up like this. Okay, so we have something like this. We added in this detail. How do we make this thing go down to basically from going to from five edges to scroll down to just one edge on this side because I don't want to have all of this information traverse down my geometry. So the way that I can do this is in a few steps. Basically, if we go from five edges and we want to go down to one, we can't just uh, simply go to one. We have to basically uh, scale it down incrementally. So for this, I'm going to first off, I'm going to put in an, uh, just a simple edge to help me control this thing. Let's say over here. And I'm going to put one more edge in here. Now, with the middle edge selected, I can move this thing upwards like this. Select these uh, two edges that we've uh, put in here and control backspace to remove these or just right click and remove this uh, remove these edges now what I've done here is I have a huge end gun in here but what I can do is again select these two vertices and connect them so right click and connect and now I can get rid of both of these edges because I no longer need them I have a bit of an issue because these are on the corners, but I can just scale them inwards a bit until they get to the middle point like this. So I have some consistency in the size of my polygons. Now I've went from having five edges to actually having three edges. So how do I make this thing to go to one? Well, for this, I'm going to go in and add in one more edge in here. And now what I'm going to do is do the same thing we did over here. I'm just going to select this one, move it upwards, select both of these edges, control backspace, remove them, and just go ahead and do this. So now I have one polygon over here. I have another one over here. I'm just trying to space them out a bit. And oops, without this one. And we went from having five edges to down to one edge in here. And that's a pretty good way of controlling your geometry and your topology if you want to curb your uh, details to a certain area. Now, another thing that's uh, really worth mentioning is that if you're going to use an approach like this, there is one thing that needs to be covered, and that is that the plane that you're going to be using to uh, basically do this must be on a planar surface. Because if this thing, for example, is on a curved surface, surface this is going to be an issue. Let me show you what I mean. For example, I'm just going to hold down uh, 
this or take this model, copy it 180, put it on this side, move it like this, and snap it to here. All right, so I'm going to attach both of these, and I'm going to go ahead and weld this. And if I put a turbo smooth on, you're going to notice that these are just working as well. No problems whatsoever. Everything looks uh, nice. If I take a look at here, there are no shading issues. Pretty much, this looks like just a plane and with two edges on the sides that are extruded. But if I put a, let's say, a bend modifier on this, and I start bending this thing around, let's choose another there we go, on a, a different axis, for example, even like this. If I bend these two together for like 360, you're going to notice that, again, everything looks fine. There, There is no issues whatsoever. But here's where the problem comes. Now, there are no issues because this is still a plane. So when it's on a plane, no matter what kind of geometry you have, it's always going to be smooth. But let's say we change this thing. And from uh, using it on the Y, let's use it on the X. Now, when I do this, right away, you can notice around here, and this is especially noticeable if you basically extend this even further, you can basically see all of these problems that are arising in here, these inconsistencies in the surface of the model. So this approach, like I said, it's viable if you're going to use it on a plain that's basically on a flat surface that doesn't have any bends or twists, you can use this approach. If you have a, a surface that has uh, curves on it, you might actually have to follow along the curves of that geometry. So here we actually saw how to uh, start with five edges and end up with one and how to terminate this. So if we would, basically, if you want to start off with one and move up to five, what we would have to do is do the same steps we did over here, but just do them in, uh, in a reverse way. Now, how do we go from having, let's say, one edge and finishing up with four instead of five? Well, let's see that thing as well then. I'm going to start off again with a plane. I'm going to use the same thing, 50 by 50. Let's uh, just give it the same material so it's easier to see. I'm going to make it black. There we go. All right. So I want to start off uh, with just one and end up with four edges. So in order to do this, what I'm going to have to do is, again, uh, put an edit poly. Now let's add in one edge in here. And I want to add one in here as well. So we start off with something like this. Now, the th first thing that I'm going to do is select both of these vertices and connect them together like this. Now, this will allow me to basically select both of these edges and remove them. So by just doing this, I st start off from one uh, edge and now I'm at the point where I actually have two edges. So I have all quads, so no issues over there. Now, the only problem here would be if, uh, again, this is not a planar surface. So if you have a bend somewhere, this is going to affect it in a rather unpredictable uh, way, and it's going to break your uh, surface. But as long as you have a planar surface, this is not going to be a problem. So from here, let's move on uh, to another version. So let's add in one more edge in here. I'm going to make this thing planar on the Y axis like this. Actually, going to move this thing upwards a bit like this. All right. So now uh, from here, I want to add in four edges uh, on the bottom. So I'm going to add in one edge in here like this and one in here. Now, these ones, the top ones I don't really need. I don't need this one or this one. So control backspace to remove these. And what we have is uh, this. Now, in order to get this thing to go down to four, I'm going to add in one more edge in here like this. And now uh, with this done, what I will 
do is uh, just go in here, select this uh, edge over here, connect, and connect this thing in here. And now select these four we don't really need and remove them. So again, I have another loop going across, but it turned my two edges into a four sided edge. So now what I can do is again, I can uh, take these like we uh, previously had, extrude them upwards and if I put a turbo smooth on top of this, I'm going to see a bit of a problem. And that problem is going to be that the edge here is now basically losing the shape. In order to get rid of that issue, all we have to do is very simple. We just go in and move this edge one or extrude it one uh, time up. I'm going to move this thing back and again, snap this thing over here. So now this will no longer come to the edge of this thing. And when we use the turbo smooth, it will not give us any issues. So just like that, we actually started off by having just one polygon at the start. And as we progress down, we ended up with four polygons on the edge. So having said all of this, I'm going to uh, turn off the turbo smooth. Now let's see how do we take this and actually use it on a model. I'm going to put both of these to the side. And let's start off with, we can start off with a sphere or a box. Let's just go with a box again. And for this one, let's go with uh, 50, 50, 50 again, the same thing. Now, let's say, for example, that this thing is going to have some sort of a extrusion in here. For this, I'm going to go adding a couple of connects, two in there, two in here. And for this one, let's extrude it. And maybe as some sort of a coupling, let's uh, add in a couple of more edges in here. Something like this. And now we can just use uh, or extrude these outwards to get uh, the side for this coupling, something like this. Now, the problem that we would have over here is that we're actually happy with uh, having this uh, bit of geometry in here. But the problem arises uh, once we have these edges proceeding to go across our whole uh, box in here. So we need to curb the a box. So let's do the same thing with it previously. I'm going to add in one edge in here, select the middle part, move it upwards, add in, well, before I actually do that, I'm going to add in one more edge. There we go. So now remove both of these and just copy this thing around, remove both of these uh, edges now. Also, take into account the fact that whatever we do on the uh, top sides, we're going to have to mirror on the bottom. But since this is a pretty simple box, I can just, uh, once I'm finished, I can just use a symmetry in the middle. And that's going to transfer it well on this side. But for now, let's just stay in here like this. So I'm going to select both of these vertices, actually uh, these ones as well, and scale them in until I get this uh, sort of a look. Actually, I might actually move this thing a tiny bit like this. All right. Now, uh, let's go from three down to uh, uh, the simplified version. So again, add in one more edge for the work and one more like this. So again, for this, just move it up, select both of these and move it like this. Remove both of these that we don't really need. We can now even remove this one. And all of a sudden I actually have uh, this thing starting from one 
on this side and as it progresses downwards it's moving in to our final geometry in here which has five edges so again let's move this thing in and like i said as long as you have edges that are on a flat surface this will not be a problem for you and like i said let's just put this thing in the middle and since i don't have anything on the bottom side i'm just going to use a symmetry make sure it's on the right axis there we go remove that roll back space and there we go so we have the original geometry in here and also if i put a turbo smooth on you're going to see the problem that i uh, spoke of because this is no longer now a uh, just uh, flat surface with the turbo smooth is basically starting to be round and we're going to start noticing those uh, little problems but as you can see in here even though it's, it's round since everything has been laid out really well there are no uh, shading issues but without it we have all of this extra geometry curved to the edges where it's actually needed to get this uh, sort of a shape so all in all, this is a pretty simple uh, thing and a pretty simple way of working with your uh, topology. But if you do it right, this is going to save you a, whole of, a hell of a lot of work and cleanup work later on where you would have to basically deal with those flyaway uh, edges that are coming from the, that extra geometry you added in the front. So that would be it for today. I hope you guys had fun and you managed to learn something uh, new from this video. If you would like to support me, you can click the join button and the direct links will be in the description below. And the most helpful thing, as always, you can do is click the like and subscribe button and comment on the videos uh, below. Uh, as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.